Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV, welcome to our preview show, I'm Ron Riggs, alongside me Justin Bryan here, and we are going to get straight into it, I was in Launceston for the women's game, Justin was in Denport for the men's game, and let's review, let's review the women's game now, in what was a contender for game of the season by far, it was Hobart 85, Launceston 84 in overtime. And the top scorers for Launceston, Lauren Nicholson with 39 points with 12 rebounds. Ellie, Co Ellie Collins shipped in with 16 points and 13 rebounds. But for our very own Telstra Hobart Chargers, it was Kathleen Shearer with 23 points and 19 rebounds as we welcome her back to Hobart. And the youngster, Shana Thompson with a career high, 33 points from 6 of 8 shooting from the three-point line. Um, we're going to get some post-match reaction now from Derek Washington first up, and then you'll hear from Dwayne Davey. I mean, it was a close game, a fought hard battle between Hobart and, you know, and us. You know, it was going to be a good game. Uh, they fought very hard. It was a back and forth. It could have went either way. really could have went either way. Happy to, to come away, you know, playing against Launceston at Elfin. Um, happy to take a win whenever we can get it. Obviously, uh, I'd prefer that it wasn't as close, um, just for the heart and, and things of that nature. But uh, look, it was a hell of a game of basketball. Uh, the crowd was right into it. The atmosphere was fantastic. Um, and really good for us to, to open our account for 2018. So, Dwayne, pretty happy to come away with the win as much as it was pretty much a <laughs> heart-stopping type of game. And, and Derek Washington is seeing some optimistic um, things with his side as, as well. Um, now, some, some breaking news coming to hand that Mikhail Roof, unfortunately, has done her knee and she's out now for the rest of the season with the Launceston Tornado. It's a big blow there, Justin. And um, they'll be on the search for, for a new import ASAP. So, hopefully, they get someone sooner rather than later. We are aware that Lauren Mansfield um, is coming into the side this week uh, for their road trip. In what was a seesawing affair at the Elfin Sports Centre, Hobart got an early lead early on, and then Launceston were able to make a bit of a late comeback in the third. Uh, obviously, Hobart having Kylie McCauley fouled out, kind of dropped their high a little bit. Launceston capitalised on that, Justin, and were able to make a, a, a very good run to get it back within six and three quarter time. And in the last quarter, it was pretty much anyone's ball game. Uh, back and forth, the crowd was into it, a great atmosphere at the Elfin Sports Centre with, with the cowbells going off in the background, and the horns, the crowd absolutely going ballistic. Uh, an unbelievable finish, Pagey French had a, had a basket to win in regulation but it went in and out and then of course the game went overtime where Hobart stepped up and scored the first seven points before Derek Washington called a timeout. And then Launceston made some adjustments, again made another late comeback. Um, and then again, they had a chance to win it uh, with Shana Thompson missing two vital free throws with about 13 seconds to play in OT. Launceston again had a, had a drive to the basket, but it was great defensive effort by Josie Greenwood with the game-winning block. And Hobart steal this one in overtime and great confidence for, for our women's side going into the road trip next week against Bendigo and Sandringham and we're just going to throw it to Dwayne now with some comments about the next road trip. Absolutely yeah I mean we, we would have yeah, definitely wanted to, uh, to go into that trip at least with one win under the belt and um, you know now we can we can attack that with, a, with, with some clear air and um, yeah try and come home with two wins. And now to the men's game, where the Hobart Chargers were able to get one up on the Northwest Thunder, 92 to 68. Ingram with 21 points and seven rebounds for the Thunder. Also, Mason Bragg uh, contributing first game back for the Thunder within 12 months, 11 points and four rebounds to go at it. While for the Chargers, it was none other than Trey Nichols and Mafang Muo uh, knocking down crucial points, 32 for Trey and 26 for Mafang. And we're going to throw to Sam Armstrong and Anthony Stewart to get their post-game reaction. Yeah, tough loss. Um, just too many breakdowns both ends of the floor tonight and just got beat by a better team. What are your, um, what are your thoughts on the impact Mace had to the starting lineup coming back into the squad after essentially a 12 month break? Oh, he was good. He brought a lot of energy. Um, I think we're a little bit out of sync on the offensive end tonight. You know, obviously with him coming in late and Hobart probably found that last week against Kilsyth. And, uh, you know, we've got to manage that over the next couple of weeks and hopefully we can get better quickly. Yeah, big win. Uh, it's really important this time of the year to get some W's. Um, obviously last week 
we were pretty ordinary, um, but true to form, the guys responded in, in particular, Trey and uh, Matt Young, unbelievable. You mentioned Matt Young there, I mean he went, made three all of last week, when he had four buckets made alone in the, in the first quarter, tremendous shooting night. Um, must be an absolute bonus to have a knockout scorer like him. Yeah, it is. I mean, but the reality is, like, Craig opens up the game for him. And oh, and the other good thing is, Thierry, I thought Thierry had a good game defensively as well. And, and the young guys came on and didn't miss a beat. So, And we're going to have to play well like that. Um, obviously, Craig didn't, uh, Moller didn't have a great game offensively, but just his... Uh, his awareness around the court and his activity is great. So Anthony, very happy with the win over the Thunder, and Sam, a little bit disappointed, Jobo. Yeah, I think he was. I mean, considering you know last week we lost, not you know we lost to Kill Scythe, they got the win, so they thought they had the upper hand, and then to come out and put on what was a pretty poor performance by their standards. I mean, you heard he mentioned their structure fails. Um, their defensive letdowns, the fact that their scouting report just didn't work. I mean, their rebounding wasn't the greatest. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking to Mason Bragg, post game, yep. he said that was a key factor. Uh, in pretty much all facets of the game, the Thunder were really struggling, and in response, the Chargers just they dominated every other facet of the game. Really scoring, rebounding, uh, the presence on defense, their young guys coming into the side, scoring, playing defense, playing crucial minutes. Uh, even at the end of the game, you heard Sam, you know, he spoke about how the young guys, you know, came in in that junk time essentially. But I mean, we had our young guys step up when it mattered as well. So I think that was a big thing to take away for the Chargers. And, and great to see a packed house at the Denport Recreation Centre, JB. Absolutely. Very loud crowd. A lot of people about would be well in excess of probably 800 people, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were going off for everything. You've only got to look at the footage at the end of the game. I mean, Thunder were down, you know, they lost by 24. They were down by even more. They're coming in. They're hitting their shots. You know, no reason for the crowd to even be there, let alone cheer. And the place was going off for these young kids. So great motivation for kids on the Northwest. I mean, it even happened with us. You know, against Kilsyth, we hit some shots late and the crowd was still up and about. But really good and really pleasing to see the home crowd hang around and support their boys. And and let's have a look at uh, this weekend coming, uh, JB, as they're on the road to Bendigo and Sandringham. Yes, well, Bendigo only having played the one game so far and they won both in the women's and the men's. Sandringham last week, both in the women's and men's, split their games 50-50. And you've mentioned, you know, we've talked to Anthony. I mean, I talked to Trey after the game as well. And the thing they said that's crucial is they've got to have two of their three, big three, Mm. score some points. And at least if one of them isn't scoring, you know, playing some defense, spreading the floor, uh, crashing the boards, having our young guys show some great intensity like they have. Um, And someone like Trey mentioning, you know, the ability to spread the floor. And for us to run eight or nine deep on the road is going to be absolutely critical to coming away 50-50, let alone getting away with the two wins on the road. And just some quick thoughts on on the women. Obviously, have you heard heard our report from earlier in the show? I mean, it's an absolute thrill to get a win in a game like that, let alone against an interstate rival. Someone like Kathleen coming into the squad really proving a huge difference. Uh, Shana Thompson, she's been lighting it up in the SBL the last couple of weeks, so to see her come into the Seabull and bring that form forward. Uh, Kathleen showing why, in my opinion, she was the MVP last Mm. year, obvious defensive player of the year. And someone like Josie Greenwood, who's taken some steps in the last uh, season or two, she's really coming through as well. But again, Launceston, they're going to be a contender, they're going to be a force. Lauren Mansfield's only just about to come Mm. into the squad. Not good to hear about Michaela, but I mean, to see, um, you know, Collins and Nicholson be producing great points like Mm. that. Um, you know, an unbelievable game, um, unbelievable finish, and the finish went to the right team. So that's all that matters. <laughs> Absolutely, JB. And we try to be non biased here on the show. We'll take a break and we'll come back for more right after this. <laughs> And welcome back. Stay up to date on our Facebook page for any details or any information in regards to live streaming this weekend. We'll have some further news on that later in the week. So keep an eye out on our Facebook page as the charges are on the road to Bendigo and Sandringham. So just before we go, we have an interview for you again this week. It's none other than Craig Moller. Craig Moller coming off an NBL Championship win with Melbourne United. And we speak to him about his NBL experience. And we also touch on uh, Melbourne United's experience playing against OK. KC back in the NBA preseason. And that's all we have time for in this edition of Chargers TV. On behalf of the entire crew, it's goodbye. 
Craig, you've just come off an NBL Championship, a tough five game series against Adelaide. How is that experience for you? Yeah, it was a really tough series. Um, for me, it was a fantastic experience. My first uh, full season on a roster, on a team with Melbourne United, and to come away with a championship in my first year, I couldn't ask for much more. Oh, and, and obviously, you know, playing in front of, you know, 10,000 at High Sense Arena and about 8,000 at Titanium Security Arena, what's that feeling like for you? Can you describe that in any way? Yeah, phenomenal atmosphere is obviously very different going from High Sense to Adelaide and where it's really hostile, but it is a lot of fun to go over there and they're all yelling abuse and it's just a fun place to play, but it was such a good experience to have 10,000 at High Sense for that Game 5 and they played a really big part in, in getting us over the line in the end. I was going to say, it was going, it was going from home venue to home venue and, and you know, the crowd, had, as you say, the crowd had a huge part in it. But what, how your, your contribution in that final series, how did you think you went personally? Yeah, I obviously played a role off the bench and I thought I did pretty well in the minutes that I got. So I was never going to put up huge numbers or be a massive superstar in the series, but I played my role and I think that's all I was asked to do. And yeah, played my bit for the championship. Obviously, you were in Sydney before that, before you came to Melbourne and you were under Andrew Gaze. And how did you find that experience under Drury? Yeah, I love Drury as a coach and a person. Uh, he's just so vibrant, so fun all the time. He comes into training and you know, tells a great story. And yeah, so I had a great year under Andrew. Also, Dean Vickerman was the assistant that year. And so he kind of poached me from Drury the next year. Um, but obviously, as it turned out to be a pretty good decision to head down to Melbourne. Absolutely, and of course the opportunity to, to go to America, obviously a big announcement late last year with the NBL and the NBA, uh, playing against OKC, against Russell Westbrook, Carmelo Anthony, Steve Adams, all those guys. How is that to be on an NBA court, mate? Yeah, it wasn't something I ever thought I'd do, to be honest, certainly not this early in my career. Um, I think every minute I was on the court, I was matched up with Paul George, so... Yeah. Uh, another phenomenal experience and we probably should have won that game to be honest. We went down by a point and I think we had some chances certainly to win and we probably got a little bit starstruck at the end thinking <laughs> oh we, we didn't think we'd actually be in this position but yeah certainly if they can get that going again next year or in the years coming it would be an, a great experience again for all the NBL teams hopefully. Mm. Ab absolutely and as you say you, that, that, like, that was an awesome game and yeah, you had guys like Casper Ware that's had a bit of experience in, in the NBA and then of course Casey Prober with his, his American college background. Those guys were huge in that game from memory. Yeah, they were. Uh, Josh Boone was another one that's yeah. uh, played a lot of NBA in his early days. So we had some guys that certainly weren't scared and obviously you know, Chris Goulding went out injured but an Olympian, Dave Barlow, another Olympian. So we certainly had the talent to go up against them and we did believe we could win but um, like I said, we just froze a little bit at the end, unfortunately. So I'm sure if we get another crack next year, we'll hopefully get a win.